from the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. Less than 5% of people fully vaccinated in the Bahamas have been infected with COVID-19, and fewer than 1% of recovered patients have been reinfected with the disease, according to Deputy Chief Medical Officer Dr. Delon Brennan. Dr. Brennan insisted yesterday that vaccinations are the only way out of the pandemic, adding that while many may be hesitant to take the jab for various reasons, the benefits of taking the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine still far outweigh the risks. Dr. Brennan Brennan disclosed the information on a radio talk show yesterday. He added that the vast majority of people contracting the disease and being hospitalized are those who have not been fully inoculated against COVID-19. Former Governor General and Deputy Prime Minister Arthur Dion Hanna, the ardent progressive whose faith in Bahamians helped push the Bahamas toward independence and sparked the Bahamianization policy that defined an era, died at home yesterday. He was 93 years old. Mr. Hanna was Deputy Prime Minister from 1967 to 1984 and held a variety of ministerial portfolios during his time in office, including the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Finance with responsibility for public service the Ministry of Trade and Industry, and the Ministry of Home Affairs with responsibility for immigration. He was Governor General from 2006 to 2010. Mr. Hanna, the father of longtime Anglican MP Glennis Hanna Martin, was a nationalist whose views were critical in pushing former Prime Minister Sir Lyndon Pindling to seek independence for the Bahamas in the late 1960s, according to University of the Bahamas historian Dr. Christopher Curry. Tributes to Mr. Hanna poured in last night. PLP leader Philip Ray Davis described him as a lion, while Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said he remembers Mr. Hanna fighting for opportunities for Bahamians in every sector of society. Bahamas Power and Light said a mid-morning fire yesterday at its decommissioned Station O at Clifton Pier had no impact on generation or other operations. Pictures and video of the fire made the rounds on social media, with many expressing concern that the incident could affect already unreliable power supply that has plagued residents for the past few weeks. However, in a statement yesterday, BPL explained that the fire took about 25 minutes to extinguish, adding that it happened as a contractor was in the process of cutting apart two out-of-service diesel tanks. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis yesterday again encouraged people to get vaccinated as quickly as possible as he marked the arrival of 33,600 Oxford AstraZeneca vaccines. The vaccines, which were obtained through the World Health Organization's COVAX facility, came as COVID-19 cases surge in the Bahamas and as vaccine supplies run low. 35 new cases of COVID-19 were reported on Monday, and a 36-year-old woman of New Providence who died on Monday was the latest death recorded. People fully vaccinated vaccinated in the Bahamas against the virus total 46,793. There have been 106,898 doses of the vaccine administered and 61,803 people have gotten one dose. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, New York's legislative leaders signaled today that Governor Andrew Cuomo could swiftly face an impeachment trial if he doesn't resign, while a growing number of prosecutors also eyed investigative findings that he sexually harassed at least 11 women. Cuomo denied that he made any inappropriate sexual advances and insisted the findings didn't reflect the facts. But while political pressure grew, so did the potential for criminal charges against the third-term Democratic governor. District Attorney in Manhattan, suburban Westchester, and Nassau counties, and the state capital of Albany said they asked for investigative materials from the inquiry, overseen by Democratic State Attorney General Letitia James. The head of the World Health Organization called today for a moratorium on administering booster shots of COVID-19 vaccines as a way to help ensure that doses are available in countries where few people have received their first shot. WHO Director General Tedros Ghebrisus made the appeal mostly to wealthier countries that have far outpaced the developing world in numbers of vaccinations. He said richer countries have administered about 100 doses of coronavirus vaccines for every 100 people on average, while low-income countries countries hampered by short supplies have provided about 1.5 doses per 100 people. 
The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. Mid to upper level troughing over the southeast Bahamas combined with a moist tropical flow will continue to enhance shower activity mainly over the southern and extreme northern portions of the country through tonight. Mariners and residents should remain vigilant for possible water spout activity. There is a risk of rip currents along the eastern and southern shorelines in the central and southeast Bahamas. Residents are urged to remain hydrated and limit outdoor activities as heat indices are expected to reach triple digits. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be partly cloudy and hot with isolated showers and thunderstorms, mainly in the extreme northern islands this afternoon. Partly cloudy, warm and humid tonight with a few showers and possible thunderstorms. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots, but falling light and variable at times. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, very warm and breezy, with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms through tonight. A small craft's caution is in effect. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots over open waters. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 94 degrees, with an overnight low temperature of 75. Today's heat index is 104. The sun will set this afternoon at 751 and will rise tomorrow morning at 640. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets. Or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.